This is part 71 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss dirty read concurrency problem with an example. This is continuation to part 70, so please watch part 70 before proceeding. When does a dirty read happen? A dirty read happens when one transaction is permitted to read data that has been modified by another transaction that has not yet been committed. In most cases, this would not cause a problem. However, if the first transaction is ruled back after the second reads the data, the second transaction has dirty data that does not exist in the database anymore. Let's understand this with an example. Here we have a table that keeps track of how many iPhones we have got in stock. Let's say for the purpose of this demo, we are into iPhones selling business. Whenever we sell anything, there are at least two things that we need to do. First, we need to reduce the inventory by the number of items that we have sold. Second, we need to build the customer. And let's say we have this transaction one that is doing both of those things for us. Let's say we have a customer who wants to buy one iPhone. So first, we need to reduce the items in stock. At the moment, we have got 10, so it updates the items in stock to 9. And second, we need to build the customer. Let's say the customer wants to pay using his debit card. That means this transaction one has to talk to the payment gateway provider to check if there are sufficient funds. And let's assume this payment gateway provider is going to take a few seconds to get back to us. So while transaction one is billing the customer, there is another transaction, transaction two. And all this transaction want to do is read the number of items in stock. And it reads that number, which is nine. And then a few seconds later, transaction one, you know, uh, starts proceeding because the payment gateway came back with insufficient funds. That means we cannot proceed with this transaction. So it's going to roll that transaction back. When we roll the transaction back, what's going to happen to items in stock? It will be reverted to 10. But what is the number that transaction two is looking at? Nine. And that is dirty read. That is dirty data. So why did this dirty read happen? This happened because in this example, transaction two was allowed to read data that was modified by transaction one. But at that point, when transaction two read that data, that data was not committed by transaction one. So dirty reads happen when we permit a transaction to read data that has been modified by another transaction, but that has not been committed yet. Let's look at this example in action. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So I've already created that inventory table. And if you look at the inventory table, at the moment we have got 10 items in stock. And here I have two instances of SQL Server Management Studio. So the first instance here on the left is going to issue transaction one, and the one on the right is going to issue transaction two. So Let's begin a transaction. And the first thing that we want to do is update the table. So update table TBL inventory. And we want to set items in stock equals 9, where ID equals 1. And we want to build the customer, right? And to build the customer, since he's paying by his debit card, we want to talk to the payment gateway provider. Let's just simulate that. And to simulate the waiting, I'm going to use wait for and introduce some artificial delay. Let's say we want to block this for 0 hours, 0 minutes, and 15 seconds. And then eventually, you know, for this example, the payment gateway is going to come back with insufficient funds. At that point, we want to roll back the transaction, right? And on the right-hand side, all I want to do is read you know, the inventory level. So select star from TBL inventory where ID equals one, okay? And look at this. When we execute this, you know, the transaction is processing and I'm going to execute this code. By default, transaction two will be blocked. Look at that transaction to it says executing query. And this will complete its execution as soon as transaction one completes. Okay, that's because the default transaction isolation level is read committed. Look at the name, read committed. That means a transaction will be able to read some data and that data should be committed. Okay, that's what read committed isolation will do. 
because here this transaction is updating this row with ID 1 and you know it updated that and that statement is part of the transaction and here it's blocked you know it's actually waiting for something to happen so this transaction is not completed yet that means whatever change it has done it's not committed yet and this transaction 2 is going to work um, you know with the same data it needs the same data it's trying to read that same data and that data is not committed yet so that's why transaction 2 will be blocked because the default isolation level is read committed it can only read the committed data now to be able to read uncommitted data we have to use a different isolation level and that is read uncommitted so let's set transaction isolation level to read uncommitted okay and now let's go ahead and execute this and look at this when we execute transaction 2 it executes right away and look at what value we get 9 that is the uncommitted data and here transaction 1 is still processing eventually it's going to roll the transaction back and when that happens you know the items in stock will be reverted to 10 because you know we roll the transaction back look at that transaction 1 is looking at 10 but transaction 2 is looking at 9 which is dirty data which is uncommitted data so read uncommitted transaction isolation level is the only isolation level that has dirty read side effect no other isolation level has the side effect and this is the least restrictive of all the isolation levels when this transaction isolation level is set it is possible to read uncommitted data uncommitted data is also called as dirty data that's because you know there is a possibility of that being rolled back and read uncommitted transaction isolation level is the only isolation level that has dirty read side effect now here to read the dirty data we are setting the transaction isolation level to read uncommitted another option to read dirty data is by using no lock table hint and if you look at the query right here look at that it's using no lock table hint and this is equivalent to the query that we have here in transaction 2 vendor so let's look at that quickly in action so I'm going to execute just this piece of code right here uh, begin transaction and update this so we begin the transaction but we didn't either commit or roll it back so now let us go ahead and change the isolation level to read committed and now if we execute this statement what is going to happen this will be blocked why because this isolation level is saying only allow reading committed data now one way to read that uncommitted data is by using read uncommitted isolation level the other way is by using no lock table hint so on this table tbl inventory I'm going to use no lock table hint and that means it is going to allow us to read that dirty data look at that we are able to read that nine now if we roll the transaction back and if we execute this we should get 10 back okay so to read dirty data you can either set the transaction isolation level to read uncommitted or you can use the no lock table hint thank you for listening and have a great day